All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our Innovations in, Toba um, in Tobacco Control lecture. I'm Joanna Cohn, Director of the Institute for Global Tobacco Control, and I'm so excited to introduce our guest today, Dr. Luz Miriam Rinalis Shigemetsu. Um, she's come all the way from um, Cuernavaca in Mexico, where she um, directs the tobacco control program at the Institute uh, for Public Health in Mexico, the National Institute for Public Health. So um, Luz Miriam has did her medical training in Colombia and specialized in occupational health and then went to Mexico to do her master's and PhD in, in public health um, at the School of Public Health in Mexico. So as I mentioned, she's now, direct, well, not just now, she's been director of the tobacco control work at the Inst National Institute for Public Health um, since 2005. Um, and um, in, as part of that work, she oversees the Mexi what Mexico is doing in terms of implementing and complying with the provisions of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. So, um, and we here at Hopkins have collaborated with her over many years and support their s the summer course um, that they do in tobacco control for Mexico and sometimes for the re Latin American region. Um, we've worked on other, a range of other studies and are currently collaborating on a project related to illicit trade. So um, I am particularly excited to hear um, your perspective on what Mexico has accomplished over these 12 years under your watch and what the challenges uh, you know, re are, that remain. So thank you for coming all the way. Okay, <laughs> okay thank you, Joanna. Thank you for inviting me to be here today and share the experience of Mexico uh, in tobacco control. Uh, uh, I want to say that many years ago, I si sat down <laughs> like you. I was a student and was supported by Johns Hopkins School of Public Health in my master degree and my PhD degree, uh, supported by Institute for Global Tobacco Control. And um, for me, it's, uh, I feel today very proud to be here and share with you what happens uh, in the real in the real life. Okay. Oh. Okay. I this is the presentation plan. This is uh, I divided the presentation. I divided the pre I divided the presentation in different in different parts. The first part is uh, oriented to share with you the context of Mexico before the ratification of the FCTC. The second uh, the second part is related in how we create a local um, information scientific evidence in order to advocate the changes in tobacco control in Mexico. And we have a case study uh, related to the Mexico City smoke-free legislation and how to integrate this uh, scientific information into the le legislation, into the local legislation. This is a successful um, uh, step in Mexico. And, and then we can move to the current situation in tobacco control according to the Empower. We try to visualize the recent indicators about the tobacco control policy and where are the challenges that we are facing in, in this moment. And uh, at the end, this is a conclusion and how to, to drive the tobacco control in the setting of the NCDs and in the setting of the uh, sustainable goals, uh, objectives uh, in Mexico. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's start. Okay. During the 80s and the 90 decades, this is the tobacco is um, uh, tobacco consumption is a social perceivedness uh, in our in our countries. There are um, national health uh, legislation. And, but the, the tobacco legislation is not precise like, uh, like in this moment. Th there is no uh, the FCTC uh, provision and the tobacco legislation are so weak. And also the enforcement is quite important because in those days it's not enforced. 
that there are uh, there were few restrictions for tobacco products and the Mexican tobacco industry was very powerful and highly influential. Look at this, is, this is the, the late 90s, but sometimes when time passed, it's important to keep in mind this, uh, this issue because we are living <laughs> the same situation now, but in different contexts. But the difference is that we are prepared, we are now trained, and we need to visualize how to manage uh, and how to face these challenges. But remember this, this issue. But we are looking for in the internal tobacco papers that catching the information regarding the Mexico. They are focusing to target to the young people, and also it, it is important they notice, the tobacco industry notice, that the, the people in Mexico are not aware about the problem of tobacco. They are not aware about the, the health-related uh, diseases related to tobacco consumption, and they are not in for, um, and in this moment, the social uh, population and the Mexicans are not aware about the second-hand smoke. And, and it's quite important because they visualize how to, how to target the, the Mexican population in this moment. And regarding the, the tobacco control policies, they are noticed that we don't have regulation about uh, some important key issues. And some important key issues is the marketing. We don't have, in this moment at the early 90s, we, we don't have a strong legislation regarding the advertising promotion and the marketing. And also notice that the young people that would be a good uh, target population that they uh, implement their, their strategies. So the, the issue is that tobacco industry knows about the, the perspective, the indicators at the population, and they know how to implement their strategy. So the idea is that we need to track in also the tobacco industry strategies in order to visualize um, the, the strategies and in order to visualize how to, to, to drive the tobacco control uh, strategies. And this is, the, this is some examples uh, you can see. This is the magazines oriented to the teenagers. And you can find different kinds of ads of, of tobacco is in, in this moment uh, was completely available and you know you can see that this is the targeting to the young people and is completely available and this is the point of sale say uh, the street vendors this is uh, looks like like this yes with ads uh, related to to tobacco yes this is a kiosk in Mexico City, but it's changed in this moment, but it is important that you keep in mind that that situation in the late 90s, before the FCTC. Yes, I want to share you about the Mexican tobacco industry. We have two national tobacco industry. This is the La Moderna and the Cigatam, and yes, um, when the globalization enter in force, both of them are uh, entering relationship with the international. One is the British American Tobacco, and the second one is the Philip Morris. So, uh, and one of these is quite important because this relationship is still happens in this moment in Mexico. One is the BAT uh, has an industry and the headquarters in Monterrey in the north of the Mexico, and the second one, the second one, the Philip Morris is located in Guadalajara, is uh, and they are located in the most, in the second and the third largest city in Mexico, and it's quite important to keep in mind that because they. Uh, they are very active also at the local level in order to interfere not only the local uh, legislation but also at national level. Look at this. This is uh, it, it is quite important that Carlos Slim uh, was the owner of the Siga Tam, and then in, 90, in 1997 was part of the 
the big board of the Philip Morris. And yes, as the people said that he retired of this of the board two years ago, or three years ago. But during all of the time, he he was involved with the Philip Morris, and yes, it was uh, an important issue that interferes with tobacco control in our country. Okay, I, I would like to share with you that the, it's important to, to keep in mind the context, uh, the political context in, in, in the country. Yes, every six years we have a president elections, and sometimes the, with new government changes the activities uh, in public health and especially in tobacco control. Yes, this is uh, in 2000. We have a new government with the with change the the traditional uh, political party change in 2000, and we expect that this is the new one take um, new directions in public health and also in tobacco control. Okay, but Mexico was very active in the in preparing the documents and are, uh, and they were in the discussion of the FCTC. That was the reason that was we ratified and signed and ratified the FCTC in 2004. And we are uh, the first country in the Americas that ratified the FCTC. But look at this is this uh, this um, this occurs in May 28th in order to celebrate the World Not Tobacco Day. And okay, everything looks well. But this is a um, sad situation in our country. In the next month, in June of 2004, the Ministry of Health signed an agreement with tobacco industry. And it was, uh, was a sad situation for public health because we, we, we made an agreement that implies, that interferes the most important tobacco control policy. Look at this. Uh, they make an agreement and they say, okay, we, we pay one Mexican peso per cigarette pack. But this is, uh, this is 0 0.10. Uh, US dollars is per cigarette pack, and because the Ministry of Health in this in this uh, moment they need funds in order to support the health uh, reforms, the Seguro Popular. Have you heard about that? This is the is in order to finance the health uh, the universal health coverage uh, in the country. But so they expect to collect uh, more than four. Hundred million dollars at the end of 2006, but in the real life, uh, there there were a controversy in that. Uh, they only uh, collect 140 million dollars, uh, but they are condition. This is they are condition. Yes, in order to avoid tobacco taxes, to implement a new tobacco taxes in in our country. Yes, that motivates a big uh, international criticism that the debate was translated to the academic uh, uh, peer reviewer journal, and most of the people um, visualize with, which is the problem because interferes not only with tobacco taxes but only to include the pictograms in the health warnings that to um, to avoid the implement a new strategies in, in advertising and, and in, in promotion. And it is quite uh, important uh, that interferes in all of the demand uh, tobacco control policies in, in our country. This is the other, the other important paper done that visualize the key issue is the conflict of interest. This is the, and this is, uh, this is the analysis according to different uh, articles of the uh, FCTC. And the most important article that was broken in, in this agreement was the article 5.3. And that was the reason that we won this is the Dirty Astras Award of the Year goes to Mexico for allowing the tobacco industry to manipulate its tobacco control policy, contrary to the article 5.3. It is quite important to keep in mind because we are in the real life and to keep the conflict of interest 
to avoid uh, to work with the tobacco industry is, is, is the, the real life that we keep in mind every day. Okay, um, we, also, we also know that the tobacco interferes not only with the executive, but this is the Ministry of Health Regulatory Agency and the CONADIC, but also interferes with the, with the legislators. And some legislators uh, them said that have been openly accused of taking tobacco money from the tobacco industry in order to avoid or to interfere the to pass the law related to the second-hand smoke. And yes, and also the interference of tobacco industry is completely uh, related also with the mass media campaign. The Ministry of Health re released this media campaign. They say this is a counter um, media campaign, but I want uh, to see this small video You can see the level of the interfere. It's in the Spanish, but you can understand. It's in the Spanish, but you can understand. Se recomienda fumar haces ejercicio. No molesta que fumes. Mientras comen, todos hacen lo mismo. Puedes fumar embarazada, el carro con tus hijos de pasada. Un mundo donde los cigarros son a prueba de agua, para que fumes mientras te bañas. A los hombres les fascina ese aliento a tabaco en tu boca. Y a los no fumadores les encanta el humo del cigarro en la cara. Recuerda, el paraíso de los fumadores es el paraíso. Fumar mata. Ok, they shouldn't smoke, but they say, oh no, this is a counter advertisement. We are trying a new one strategy in order to be aware about the is completely banned to the act of a smoking, you know? Especially smoking, this is the pregnant women, this is the young people, is completely forbidden in our legislation. But this kind of mass media campaign broken all of this issue, and that was. At the end, we, we, we know that the, the media uh, institution that made this campaign was supported by the tobacco industry. But the tobacco industry interferes at legislation level and the executive level, and also uh, can reach the population with this kind of uh, media campaign. Okay, during that time, we have it. Is, it, is, is uh, my mentor, is it Dr. Mauricio Hernandez, who is a leading in public health in Mexico have an idea to create a special research line in the National Institute of Public Health in Cuernavaca. This is a research area in order to provide local information because local information is quite important to advocate, to make the changes. So we also have the, the lab in order to analyze the, this is the, the nicotine and the cotinine. And this is also, both of them was supported by this uh, Institute for Global Tobacco Control and was supported with the very beginning with the, uh, uh, this is the Fogarty, this is our Fogarty grant that support not only in Mexico but also in Brazil, in China and in other low and middle income countries to create this capacity in order to advocate for tobacco uh, control. At the very beginning, we start working analysis, the National Addiction Survey, and this is the, our survey, and we try to estimate the trends about that. In 2002, we have a, a smoking, a national prevalence around 26.4%. Uh, 
we also work with important indicators, the age of initiation, and we notice in the trend that um, according to the cohort uh, of um, the build cohort, the age of initiation was decreasing along the, the time. We have noticed another key issue important in Mexico. The average cigarette of a smoker is is light. This is Mexican. We have uh, a smoking prevalence is not too high, but our smokers, most of them are occasional smokers, but daily smokers are light smokers. They smoke less than 10 cigarettes per day. Another thing is that we are focused only in also in vulnerable groups in adolescents. We have tracking using the GYTS uh, in different um, states uh, in Mexico because there are some differences among the states in Mexico. In the northern, the people smoked uh, in the higher rate in comparison to the Central Park and in comparison uh, to the southern uh, states. And that was the reason we are, we are surveillance and tracking uh, individual people um, among different states. And we notice in that part that the the tobacco epidemic is in is focusing different group of ages, uh, and is still raising uh, among the young the young people. And here we notice that there is no difference among uh, women and men. Uh, in the adult, we notice that there is difference be, uh, among men and women, and is higher in men in comparison with women. But in the adolescent, there is no difference among uh, gender. We also tracking this is, is a, in 2006, uh, we carry out another survey among the healthcare providers. This is healthcare students of uh, medicine and dentistry. And we noticed the prevalence of tobacco consumption, consumption was higher than the average of the national the national level. We also focus about the global burden of disease and we notice what? Tobacco is an important risk factor of the global burden of disease, especially acute myocardial infarction, lung cancer, COPD, and yes, most of the chronic disease are uh, related to tobacco uh, consumption, and we estimate the relationship and the magnitude of the global burden of disease in, in this moment. And yes, and we notice that it is important to keep in mind the target group that this is the, the young people. And also, we try to start working with also the evaluation or some indicators about the tobacco control policies. And we notice in this time that the most of the young people has a small gift with a brand of uh, tobacco, tobacco interest. We start with also with support of Johns Hopkins University. We start to working about the, the marketing um, the marketing uh, around the schools, you can see in this moment, and, and we use GIS in order to visualize the, the density of exposure at the point of sales and also visualize what happened uh, in the indoors at the point of sales. This is the, the, the study that was carried out in different capital cities uh, in Latin America, and Mexico was a uh, part of this um, study in 2004, and we can visualize what happened in different public places. Uh, if you see this uh, slide, you can see most of the public places uh, people are exposed to secondhand smoke and was very important in restaurants and bars. And this was the uh, strong evidence that we used to promote the smoke-free legislation. And let me share with you what happened with this. In 2007, we are moving ahead. In 2006, finalized the government that I mentioned before. The government finalized and cut down the, the agreement with the tobacco industry, entered, uh, enforced a new government. But Dr. Hernandez was a vice minister of health and we are, we are so happy because we have chance to move ahead uh, using our information to advocate for tobacco control. And now in 2007, 
this is the NGOs uh, appears in the uh, scenario of tobacco control. And they're trained in our summer course in order to, to get more uh, skills and more information to advocate for tobacco control. And we are working with lawyers also this year in order to prepare the legislation. And that was the uh, strategy that we used. We put all of this information that I presented you before in a document in order to create some statements in order to advocate for a new legislation. And yes, it's in 2008, entering for a comprehensive smoke-free legislation in Mexico City. In this moment, we are negotiating uh, two different legislation, the federal one and the local one. But this one was the successful uh, strategy because they include all the provisions. The best practice of the um, Article 8 was included in this uh, legislation. That was the reason that was uh, as successful. We also uh, support this kind of legislation with a media campaign, and we have chance to evaluate the media campaign with the population, and all of the people who live in Mexico City support the smoke-free uh, places, including, and we evaluate, including different public places, and also the smokers support the, the new legislation. We have chance also to evaluate this, um, this um, legislation using the, the monitors uh, in the place. Uh, we put some monitors, in, in the air monitors, in order to evaluate. And look at this, this is, you can see uh, the difference between Mexico City is in, in the right. This is, we put uh, some monitors in public places, and in comparison with another state that has uh, a smoking rate similar to Mexico City, but they, they don't have the le local leg legislation, and we can compare and produce this information in order to, to communicate to the people that this kind of legislation works and works in Mexico. We also uh, run this kind uh, of project uh, to evaluate the uh, economic impact in the hospitality sector in order to evaluate the number of uh, um, restaurants, the number of bars, and we can demonstrate that Mexico City has a good performance in comparison to the others. There is no uh, problem in the hospitality uh, sector uh, when you implement the smoke-free uh, legislation. We also have ta uh, or the opportunity to evaluate the population benefits, and we can demonstrate when one year after uh, the implementation of the smoke-free, we can uh, decrease and diminish the hospital discharge and the mortality related with um, acute myocardial infarction. And was quite important to demonstrate with scientific evidence that the legislation works and we can move ahead with a uh, federal uh, or with another local um, legislation. And we're also tracking about that, the difference between Mexico City and the, and the national without legislation. And we can demonstrate that the people, the exposure to secondhand smoke is lower in Mexico City in comparison to the other state that they don't have the legislation. Between 2008 and 2014, Using the same strategy, we prepare the information at subnational level, and we use the same strategy, and we can uh, promote 11 subnational smoke-free legislation. And this is um, um, and this um, legislation, local legislation, covers 44 uh, percent of the total Mexican uh, population. But this is the 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 situation that is, is not changed, this is the current situation in Mexico. Uh, we can uh, move ahead to pass the national legislation, and we don't have chance also to move ahead with uh, another uh, local legislation because the tobacco industry interference is high in Mexico, and we cannot promote uh, a new legislation uh, in this uh, policy. But let me... 
uh, share with you. This is the current uh, information regarding the, the GATS 2015 and share with you the current situation. The, the, the good news is that we have uh, a good team in research. We have a multidisciplinary research uh, in the economics, in, in epidemiology, in public policies, uh, communication. It's, it's, um, it's a good thing. We implemented not only an international surveillance system using ads, we have the opportunity to carry out both of these um, uh, national survey. We, we learned a lot uh, about that. And we have chance to move this uh, knowledge to our national surveillance system, including the new one questionnaire and new one indicators in order to, to monitoring and tracking the, the tobacco uh, control in our country. This is uh, good news. But the bad news is there is Nothing happened between 2009 and 2015 because most of the, the strategy was implemented partially and not was implemented in a comprehensive setting. And it's quite important if you want to be effective, to, has, uh, to reach a, a decrease in the smoking prevalence or secondhand smoking exposure or to impact in the, in the outcome, uh, in the population out outcome morbidity or mortality, you need to implement the best uh, strategies in each article of FCTC and implement in a comprehensive setting. Okay. Yes, there is no difference between national, uh, um, in the smoking uh, prevalence at national level. There is no difference among men and there is no difference among women. The smoking prevalence is decreasing. Yes, it's decreasing. Now we have in 16% of uh, this is our smoking prevalence. Oh, it's not too high. But, okay, we are, uh, um, we have more than 14 million of smokers. This is our net current situation. Okay, but we, so there is a, the daily smokers consume fewer cigarettes per day. This is, is a, is a diminish between uh, 9.3 cigarettes per day in 2009 and, nine, and now we are smoking 7.7. .7. Yes, it's moving. The smoking epidemic is moving uh, in different groups, in different patterns. But uh, this is the current situation. But the only thing that we promote at this moment is that we need to change the general law of tobacco control according to all of the provision of the WHO FCTC. Yes, we, uh, this is the UITS in 2011. We have a problem with the young people because the, the tobacco epidemic is racing in this group of age, and there is no, you can see, there is no difference between um, men and women, and some states, the smoking prevalence is higher in women than men. It's important to keep in mind. <laughs> Regarding the secondhand smoke, let me share with you you can see, uh, according to the subnational uh, legislation, you can see a diminish, a decrease in, in the exposure in some government buildings, in the in homes, in in restaurants. But look at look at the bars. Look the same. You know, Th there is a small uh, decrease in the exposure, but it's still high. And, and it's important because it's still high in the, in the places that, that um, are attended by young people. And it is quite important. This is the, the results of the partial implementation of the smoke-free legislation. And we tried in this moment to refresh and update the arguments in order to move ahead uh, with the legislators and, and to approve the the 100% smoke-free, the national uh, legislation. But uh, regarding the cessation treatment, okay, this is an effort of the government to implement some specialized uh, clinics in order to provide the, the cessation treatment and also use uh, 
it's not a quick line, but this is a help line in order to <coughs> orient the people to attend this kind of uh, um, this kind of unit, and we have a, a, an official standard I in Mexico in order to establish the cessation. But the key issue is two key issues in that part: the pharmacological treatment is not available to the population to the smokers is not integrated in the national plan and the second one the healthcare providers don't have time to provide the brief counseling and this take time and this is the the issue that look at this this is our uh, smokers uh, increase the quit attempts but they don't they are not motivated to quit it, it is a key issue they they try but they don't want to quit because we need to enforce the cessation treatment uh, strategy in the issue. Okay. 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 Uh, and this is the, the issue. The, the idea is to promote, to integrate a low-cost pharmacotherapy in the national plan in order to offer to uh, smokers that want to quit it, they access to the to the therapy. The second one is to include a special guidelines because we have a, a smoker, the 20% of the people who have diabetes are a smoker, 15% of the people who have cancer are a smokers, and so we need also to update uh, the guidelines in order to to reach to the smokers, not only at, at community level, but also at a clinical level uh, in order to catch uh, all the smokers and promote the cessation. And we are trying now with an integrated mobile technologies for uh, smoking cessation with new apps, with uh, SMS, uh, text messaging, in order to visualize a new strategy to catch the smokers and invite them and motivate them uh, for uh, tobacco cessation. This is the new one. This is in 2010, we entered in force the new one. Uh, health warnings include the, the pictograms in the 30% of the front uh, side and the 100% uh, in the back side and 100 in one lateral uh, side. But this is, it was in 2010, there was uh, seven different waves, but the structure is the same. At the very beginning, we noticed in the survey that oh, most of the smokers are motivated uh, to quit, at, um, to attempt to quit, and are motivated and think uh, to quit. But now, in the new uh, survey, we notice that the effectiveness of this kind of a strategy is uh, diminishing along the time. Yes, we noticed that. But this is the key issue, because they notice the health awareness, and some of them are motivated. But if you don't have an integrated uh, strategy, they don't access to the cessation treatment, and it's not working at the end. So we are promoting that increase the size of health awareness, almost 50% of the, the front and the back side, or maybe make some trials um, and, and pro provide a new information in order to move ahead with the plain packaging. But this is a future uh, strategy. But uh, here, in this moment, we are working in the amendment of the legislation in order to increase to the 50% of the situation. Um, and this is the regarding the tabs. It's completely forbidden. The the tabs in, in the TV at national level, and also is forbidden in, in, the, in the internet, but the key issue is the enforcement of the law, you know, the accomplish of the, of the legislation, okay? And most of the, most of the, um, the promotion, the advertising, okay, you can see this is a little bit diminished uh, of the exposure, but this is, high in the point of sales and is still high in everywhere. So the idea is we have a partial uh, uh, policy in this 
part and this is a key issue because the tobacco industry continues inter interferes and try to catch in the the new population the young the young people and yes we we can include in the new legislation to prohibit the display of products of tobacco products at point of sales and regarding the taxes this is the taxes that the people say that tar taxes tobacco taxes is not working because people are still are still working but this works and yes was as successful in 2011 we increased this, uh, the yeps this is the specific tax of of tobacco this is a big increase in in the taxes and we can see and we can track that sales of tobacco fell down and also, we increase the government revenue from tobacco taxes. And, and it is quite important to, to visualize and show to the policymaker that tobacco taxes works and works in Mexico. And it's necessary to uh, improve and increase the tobacco taxes uh, in the next, uh, in the next uh, government. And, and yes, and also to show to the Ministry of Economics is about revenues. And we, uh, revenues in, in during the five, uh, during the last five years is more than $10.7 billion. But the issue is not um, uh, ear market, it's not ear market, and we are trying to advocate to part of these uh, revenues can use uh, for NCDs or for tobacco control as other Latin America has been implemented in this moment. Okay, this is the, the same comment that uh, that I told you that uh, tobacco taxes works, works among young people, and we need to, mm. to implement the tobacco taxes increasing in the new one. We are continue working also in the monitoring, tracking, and tobacco control. Now, we, we continue working with this strategy in different uh, cities uh, along the country, but we are noticed now this is the selling single cigarettes. This is a key issue, it's a problem, because most of the 50% uh, of the smokers buy single cigarettes, and single cigarettes are available in every corner uh, in the cities. And this is the con this is the problem because it's a, a a circle because our smokers are occasional smokers and it's so easy to to buy a single cigarette. And he, he continue uh, smoking, and they are not motivated to quit the smoking. And this is the other, this is the monitoring with TPAC. This is a project with the uh, Institute for Global Tobacco Control. And the idea, we are talking with, um, with, um, with the researchers that it's quite important to implement this strategy, but in different ways, because the tobacco industry changed the marketing every, I think by monthly, maybe four or five uh, times a year, they change all the strategy as, uh, of the marketing. We noticed in 2013, this is the, the um, flavor capsules. Most of the, they introduced in this year, the new one brand, this is Paul Mall, but they introduced the flavor capsules. And now in our current survey, we notice that Camel is going down but Paul Mall uh, is situated in the second in the second top five brand in in our country, especially to capture the the young people and change. But but in this moment, it's including only one flavor capsule. Now they include new var varieties of brand. This is a new marketing and include not only one, but include two di two different flavor capsules with two different flavors and change the, the marketing strategy uh, in, among our country. Okay. Yes, it's the, the idea is now, yes, this is a lesson learned. Research, surveillance is quite important. We put the, all of the, um, our results, research uh, results, we put in peer review or journals, 
international unit, but we have a national peer review journal, Salud Pública de México, and, and we prepare some special editions uh, in order to approach different uh, topics, uh, secondhand smoke, surveillance, and different policies. And this is one strategy that we use to present the result. But also, we are also in this moment specialized to translate this evidence to the public in general, but also for policymakers preparing the special brief reports in order to advocate that. And some um, um, reports, the survey reports or reports related to the economics, and also we have a web page in order to disseminate all the results, the projects, and all the results are public and, and I are available to the people to use this information to advocate for uh, tobacco control. And also, this is, um, this is our summer course. Every year in August, we have this summer course. This is, um, this is uh, the academic uh, arena uh, that we, we have been implemented in Mexico 15 years ago. And every year, we train not only the people at uh, state level, but also people at a regional level at regional level, and we have a, this is um, a great platform in order to train people that works in tobacco control. We have a special editions in order to train the journalists. Uh, we have a special edition in order to train also the NGOs that advocate, and also include in the morning, we include the lectures, uh, and the panels, but in the afternoon, the people uh, work in a workshops in order to prepare a plan or prepare a proposal or to write uh, a paper or to write a brief um, fact sheet in order to advocate for tobacco control. And this is uh, one of the the, the strategies that we, we keep with the uh, Institute for Global Tobacco Control, and yes, it's with good uh, results. And yes, we are here, but we need to move ahead in how to integrate tobacco control in the NCD program, pro, uh, program in Mexico, not only at the international level, but also in Mexico. And this is our goal. This is to reduce 30% of uh, tobacco use, but implies for us, we have a, a global smoking prevalence in 16%. So we need to, to reach 11.5% in 2025. So this is our goal. This is, there is a goal for uh, global uh, smoking prevalence, but also with daily, uh, daily smoking prevalence. In our setting, we think we can reach the second one because you know our um, our smoking pattern is divided. Our epidemic is divided in two parts, big parts. This is one is in the occasional, and the other one is the, in the daily smokers. The daily smokers uh, smoking prevalent is going down. It's going down among men, but it's going down, and we expected that we can reach the second one. The other one is the, the global is, is smoking prevalence. Uh, we need to implement uh, a comprehensive legislation and also targeted the occasional smokers. We need to implement some targeted and effectiveness uh, strategy in order that these occasional smokers finally quit and uh, quit uh, tobacco smoking. Otherwise, I think it's quite difficult to to reach uh, this goal. And we are working with a new team, eh, with a new um, office in the government. This is the, the office that leads the Agenda 2030, uh, uh, that this is in order to get the, the global uh, sustainable uh, objective. But this is, yes, we face a big challenge because they don't understand how works the tobacco control in the final impact of the population impact. But we are now preparing some documents in order to be aware how to work tobacco control uh, in the process to reach these, uh, these goals. 
And yes, we are in 2017. My next year is just a new election of the president, once again, a new election of the some of the state at, uh, at state levels, the governor, the new governor, governor, and we try to collect and put together the new one information, the, the update the information to refresh the arguments, to, to uh, create that strong argument uh, in order to advocate for tobacco control, for NCD uh, goals and sustainable goals uh, objectives. And we are working now in, in a platform, not only with, a, with, a me with Mexicans, which is the, there are some specialized NGOs in, in Mexico that uh, the target is the, the population of Mexicans in order to be aware about the health problems and how to control them, but also in the political context. We have prepared a document, a formal document, in order to work with the candidates and uh, with the poli uh, political parties in order to advocate to include some strategies in their, in their programs in order to move ahead. This is our challenge uh, in this moment. Um, we have the support from the general director and our center the director, and we continue translating the information from the scientific evidence to the put in place uh, in the programs and also in the, in the new legislation. And that's it. <laughs> and yes, uh, yes, this is uh, our links, and you can find, yes, it's, uh, some of, most of the information are in Spanish, but there are some papers that are written in English that is, is available for the, for the stakeholders and also the academics and in the general public that wants to work in tobacco control. Now we know everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little bit, but no about that. Thank you so much for coming and giving this talk. It was really wonderful. Um, so you talked a little bit about um, how there's a need to really look at the FCTC and make sure that you're strictly following that. Can you talk a little bit about maybe how you're prioritizing um, which of the Empower framework you're going to go after first? Yes, the, the, the idea, the first step of implementation of the CTC is to implement the Empower, you know? But if you want to, yes, to select the strategies, yes, we need to move ahead with the smoke-free legislation at national level and enforce the local ones. This is the big one. And the second one is the, the tobacco tax increase. Yes, we need. With this government, it's not possible. But the new government, we need to increase the tobacco taxes once again. And yes, the, the idea is to, to work with the increases, the health warnings. This is the, and also, this is the, sometimes it's, um, it's the most difficult part is to, prohibit the total ban of uh, tobacco advertising promotion it is but sometimes the w when you are in a, in a negotiation with <laughs> legislators in the real life you need to have a, a card you know and sometimes you need to select one one of the strategy that you need to negotiate at the end so sometimes it's not the correct way, but sometimes the, the total ban of uh, promotion and advertising is the card uh, of negotiation. But it's not the correct, you know, because this is the, the, the door. It, it is quite important. It's not negotia for negotiation, but sometimes it's that. But so we, we, we believe that the most important thing uh, uh, strategy now in Mexico is to move ahead with the smoke-free environment. Hello. Oh, there's someone. Go ahead. I'll go. <laughs> All right. Um, so 
I think a big part of what you what you talked about is that um, progress is like largely dependent upon who's in office um, and making sure that the people that are in office are in support of these tobacco control measures. And so I know that Mexico is um, expecting new leadership really soon. And you talked about how, you know, with the new leadership, you'll have to repackage, rehash all of the data, all of the information mm -hmm. that you've collected over the years. So have you and your team and other communication folks really given um, thought to how do you package all of this information for this new group of, you know, um, policy makers and, and how do you convince them that this is important to really get to that, that number one agenda item, which is national smoke-free law? Yes, it, we are working in, in that. We, we have a, a, a new report of the national survey in this moment, and this is the, our job for the first uh, months of 2000, <laughs> the next year. Yes, we need, we are working with, the, with our general director in order to prepare some brief report in order to, to put the, the main arguments uh, to promote or to advocate with the candidates and also the pol political parties. Um, provide this information and there is a, a strategy at national level supported by TFK to advocate at the, with the Mexicans, with media campaigns, yes, in order to promote and be aware about that. And there is another NGOs that are working with the legislators. It's easy now, in this moment, they are working and we are providing this information, yes. So thank you so much for the very interesting presentation. Um, so you mentioned that the smoke-free legislation was passed in Mexico City and in some other states, right? Um, but it's, um, I guess Mexico hasn't been able to pass a national legislation or a legislation in other states because of industry interference. So I'm wondering what are what makes Mexico City and all these other states that did pass the legislation like what makes it different and unique from the other states and at the national level that they were able to pass the legislation? Does that make sense? <laughs> like perhaps there's a stronger, you know, NGO or, you yes. know, um, <laughs> you know, factors like that. Yes, yeah. great uh, question. This is, the, did you remember my slide when I show you the, this is, this is the, the state that pass the legislation, that there is a special team working in this state, preparing all the, the data, the evidence at a state level. You know, for example, this is uh, Monterrey, this is, no, this is in the Nuevo León, this is in a northern state. We prepare all this information with data, with, with this local. And there is an NGO that is working in the state with the local legislators, with the local executive ministry of health. And yes, we are working at local, but only works when you have a team. This is the team is, is a comprehensive team that we have the support from the executive, yes, the ministry uh, of health at local level, with the legislators at local levels, and we you have the local information, which is we are supporting all of these 11 uh, states. In the states that there is no this team working, oh, no, <laughs> it's, not, it's not working in, in that case. But the, the idea is we need to work uh, with, uh, in, a coordinate, in a coordination with the NGOs, with the executive, with the legislators, and the scientific evidence and works. Otherwise, it's not working. Okay, unfortunately, I think we're gonna have yeah, to yeah, end it yeah. there, but th we're, we're gonna all be with you come the new year and can't wait to hear about passage of a comprehensive smoke-free <laughs> law in Mexico and also you know, reducing the advertising. Yeah. But I know they've got great people at the helm, so um, wish you all the luck and looking forward to hearing about the successes. So thanks very much. Okay, thank you for your support. <laughs>